Welcome to the makeup meeting for November of 2023. So I know that we are past November in getting this uh, makeup meeting up, uh, but I do have one accident video that I want to show you. We had several in November, but I'm not going to go back and rehash all of those. We've talked about those in some of our other safety meetings. Uh, we had an accident with the van in November, um, and I want to show this to you uh, to be aware of, number one, uh, where you're driving in the yard uh, and your speed in the yard. So um, the van driver was exiting the yard, coming around the bend towards the back. Uh, and if you look at the bottom of the video, go, you might have to watch it a couple of times, you'll see that it lists the speed. The driver was going 35 miles an hour uh, on that back stretch. I know it is easy to speed when we get into that back stretch of the yard. And as you all know, uh, speed limit for buses in the yard is five miles up by the building, 10 miles uh, when you get down closer to the west gate. Uh, same thing for our vans. Uh, 35 in the yard is completely unacceptable. Um, but the driver also uh, struck a tree branch before driving down into the ditch, clear back at that back corner of the yard. So I want you to watch the video uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. a little bit about what you just watched. Um, certainly speed was a big factor here. Um, when watching the video, watching what the driver was doing, they didn't have their head on a swivel, um, looking around, being aware of all of their surroundings. Now, van drivers, you are held to the same accountability, the same standards as the bus driver. Uh, all the things that we talk about with the bus drivers that you got in training because you watched the same videos, the rocking and rolling, uh, the look ahead, look around, leave room, communicate, the following distances, all of that. You're held to that same standard and expectation. And so going this speed in the yard and not being aware of your surroundings, not, um, you know, using those triple LCs is unacceptable. Um, so, yes, no matter what vehicle you're driving, even if you're driving your personal vehicle leaving the yard, you need to adhere to the speed limits and you need to be looking around, especially when you're, your personal vehicle leaving the yard. Sometimes because the, our personal vehicle is such a familiar place, we tend to let bad habits creep in and bad things. We're not really paying attention, um, going too fast, on the phone, eating, uh, all the things that you wouldn't do in a bus, shouldn't be doing in a bus, is happening in your personal vehicle because it's familiarity, it's comfort, uh, it's comfortable surroundings. That doesn't mean that it's right. It's still just as unsafe as if you were in a bus. Um, so whenever you are in any any vehicle, watch your speed in the yard, first and foremost. When you're up here by the office building and the shop, the fuel area, five miles an hour. Okay, we have people walking, the people crossing the parking lot, going to their personal vehicles, people crossing to go out to the smoking area. Uh, we have drivers crossing the bridge to go to their buses. You have drivers fueling moving about. We have mechanics. We have staff. We have training going on. We have an off-site tester who comes in and uses our facility. Facility. It's a lot of movement up here at the front of the yard, and so keep that speed down. When you are on the back side of the yard, getting to the west gate, getting to the bottom of the uh, parking lanes, ten miles an hour is you can get up to ten. And if you having a hard time keeping it down there. Drop your bus into first gear. That will force you uh, to go really slow. And, you know, and please make sure that when you're in the parking lanes, never, never backing down the lane. If you park close down to the west gate entrance, you do not back up on the road to go. You have to go forward and exit the way everybody does. Um, let's not get lazy in what we're doing. 
So our focus for the month of November was slips, trips, and falls. A very timely subject now that we're getting into the colder months and we have had some snow and ice. So let's talk about being aware of slips, trips, and falls. So our goals and objectives for this training is to be aware of slips, trips, and falls. What causes them, areas where they can happen, and to understand ways to prevent them. So this statistic on this slide is from 2018, but I will tell you when I go back and I look at, at all of our injuries from uh, the past couple of years since I've been in this position, the majority of personal injuries are due to slips, trips, and falls. Tripping over rugs, slipping on ice. Um, we've had monitors uh, injured while the, because they're moving around while the bus is moving, which is categorized as a slip, trip, and fall. Um, and these can be very dangerous, especially for, uh, you know, a lot of our workforce is older, where a slip, a trip, a fall could mean something like a broken knee, a broken hip, a uh, torn meniscus. It could mean surgery, uh, a lot of time out in recovery. And that adds up in cost, uh, cost to the company because uh, it's workman's comp claim, uh, but a cost to you because if you are getting a workman's comp, you're not making your full wage. You're only getting a, a small percentage after a certain amount of time. Um, and so we need to reduce uh, the slips, trips, and falls that we have here, not just because we're looking to reduce our cost and you know reduce our overhead, those types of things, but to, to protect you. Uh, we don't want to see any of our employees injured uh, while they are on the job site. So this graphic here is some information that I have accessible to me to show me the breakdown of uh, our accidents, our injuries, these types of things. It takes all of the data from whatever given period of time and boils it all down uh, so that I can know what is the most common accident, what is the most common injury, time of day, uh, what was injured, all of those kinds of things. So this is this graphic was taken from uh, July 1st of 2022 to uh, June 30th of 2023. So this was the 22 fiscal year, 22-23 uh, fiscal year. And um, we had four slip, trip, and falls injury. Um, and the, bit, the biggest cause of them um, was uh, walkways and sidewalks tripping over the curbs, uh, tripping over the crack in the sidewalk. Uh, we had uh, a trip on over a rug that caused uh, extensive knee damage to somebody. Um, and they had to have surgery. They were out m months. Um, you know, when we look at the time of day that it happened, they most typically happen in the afternoon. Well, what do we know about the afternoons? Well, uh, maybe we're a little bit more aware in the mornings because it's dark. Uh, because when, if we're going to have ice here, typically it's going to happen in the mornings. So in the afternoons, you know, we're thinking, oh, the pavement's just wet, um, tired uh, because you've been up early, didn't get your nap in that day. Um, so something to think about. We have to be just as aware in the afternoons as we are in the morning, uh, making sure that we're picking up our feet, that we're not shuffling those feet. I know um, sometimes as we get tired, uh, we're not walking as well as we should. Uh, I, you see this in a lot of older folks who are very worried about falling and their uh, balance is they don't actually pick up their feet, put their, pick their foot up and put it down when they walk. They'll shuffle, shuffle their, their feet along thinking, well, if I don't pick my feet up, then I can't lose my balance. And actually shuffling is just as unbalanced as trying to walk normally. It's better to be walking normally than to be shuffling the feet. And like I said before, slips, trips, and falls can be very costly, and the injuries can be devastating. If you remember a few years ago, we had a driver that fell off a ladder while attempting to wash the windows on their bus uh, and sustained uh, a pretty substantial head injury. Um, like I said, you know, torn ligaments, tor you know, injured joints, uh, broken bones, all of those can happen as a result of a slip, trip, and fall, which is a preventable event. So in that data that I have available to me, I also have what is the cost of injuries and accidents. And if you look up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, it lists uh, different types of injuries and events, and then it tells you how much money was spent. 
Now we have a very costly one that was struck by or against, but if you look, the next one is slips, trips, and falls. Uh, around $32,000 were spent uh, just on those four slip, trip, and fall injuries. That's a substantial amount of money. That's And that that's just the medical bills. That's not including the time away from work. Um, if the, if the employee had to do, you know, whatever, um, that's, that's just the medical bills. So what are some common, uh, slip, trip and falls? What leads to them? Well, snow and ice covered walkways. That's kind of a given. What have we done to help alleviate that? Uh, we watch that weather like a hawk, Phil, Rebecca, and I do. And when we know that there's going to be icy conditions, um, so when we leave in the PM, um, I'm typically the last one here, and I'm taking note, is it wet? Uh, do we need to get out and get it salted the night before? Uh, or we're always watching to see, are we expecting precipitation through the night? Um, and then we have people that come in early, and they get out, and they, they put the ice melt down on the sidewalks and walkways. Uh, we have a uh, pickup truck, a shop truck with a plow on the front. If there's snow, we're going to get out there and we're going to uh, try to plow out uh, some of the areas so it's much easier for you guys to navigate. We have our ice cleat policy. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So when the, the orange flag's out on the gate, you need to be wearing, you are required actually to wear those ice cleats when you walk from your car into the building and from the building out to your bus. Now, we don't wear the ice cleats in the building. We did have a slip, trip, and fall um, accident where the employee was wearing their ice cleats in the building. Uh, if they don't have anything to grab onto, then they're slick. They're, des they're designed to be for ice, so it can grab, you know, grip into that. So uh, what else can cause a slip, trip, and fall? Liquids on a surface. Um, somebody, you know, the toilet overflowed in the bathroom or uh, those times when we have uh, snow on our the bottom of our shoes, we come in and there leaves puddles on the floor. Um, that can be slick. Uh, you'll notice that when our janitorial staff is here and they've mopped the floors that they put up the yellow signs, they want you to be aware that the floor potentially could be slippery. Um, any debris such as, um, you know, cords left down. If you remember back to when we used to plug in our buses when the weather was cord or weather was cold. Uh, that was a big trip hazard around all of the buses. You're doing your pre-trip, and it was real easy to get your feet tangled up in those cords that were laying on the ground. Thankfully, now with cold start and you following the cold start procedures, the wait to start on your bus, we don't have to have those drop cords out. So we've, we've helped to eliminate one of the trip hazards. Uh, uneven surfaces such as potholes. I mean, that is our whole bus parking area. Quite frankly, it is uneven. Even if you're not walking around the potholes because of the material that it is, uh, it's road mix that's been ground up, put down. Uh, it's not compacted down very well. There can be rocks that you could trip on. There could be small holes that are starting to develop. Uh, so you have to be aware of those. Poor visibility. Um, you know, here it is. This is during Christmas break when I'm filming this. And we've had lots of fog. We have, we're into, well into our inversion time. Um, and so you just don't see what's coming up ahead. You don't see that little uh, ice puddle there. You know, that was, it's a puddle during the day, but in the mornings it's ice. You might not see it because of poor visibility. Climbing up on ladders and steps, you should not be doing, I mean, no ladders. Okay. We took away the ladders from the fuel pumps. Um, you do have steps getting up onto your bus, but one of the things that I've heard some of you do and I've seen and I've talked to you about is when you're trying to wash your windows, you pull down that little step on the side of the bus and you're stepping up on that. Don't be doing that, okay? Um, the squeegees have long handles on them. Um, you know, the buses get washed on a somewhat regular basis when it's not too cold outside. Do not be using this or, or bringing in a step ladder to use either. Uh, loose mats or rugs. Now we have very low profile rugs with grippy surfaces on them that are maintained for us by a professional company. Um, but you know, if there was like other loose rugs laying about, that's why we, we don't want you bringing in, you know, cute little decorative rugs and those kinds of things, but be aware of those in your home. Um, if you have throw rugs, I have a rug in my laundry room and the back of it was not gripping the floor very well. And so I went to Walmart and you can get uh, rug gripper mats and it's it's kind of a rubbery material and I put it down on the floor and it grips the tile and then it grips the back of the uh, rug and now 
I'm not ice skating every time I go into my laundry room. So uh, there are things that you can do to help uh, mitigate some of these risks. So what are some other areas that we encounter around here that could potentially be a hazard uh, or the possibility of a slip, trip, or fall injury? Uh, when we talked about the parking lot, the potholes, or unseen things, how about um, the vegetation areas? We want you to walk on the sidewalks. So when you come out of the building, that, that door that goes out to where the buses are, you all know which door I'm talking about, um, there's a little corner that people tend to cut and they step down into the rocks or they're walking over on the grass. Um, that's an uneven surface, especially when you go from a hardened uh, flat surface like the sidewalk to an uneven bumpy surface or that, that lip between the two surfaces or surfaces. That's a trip hazard, and we've had people injured there. Um, if you ever, if you're new here and you wonder why I have that big orange uh, fenced off area over by the buses, it was because we had a big old slip, trip, and fall injury there. Uh, people were cutting across the dirt there, and in that dirt is a lot of embedded rocks, and somebody tripped and fell and broke their nose um, and couldn't get people to stop cutting across there, so put up the corral, call it Keith's Corral. So um, yeah, um, other areas that, that could be a problem, getting in and out of your vehicle, um, especially if you're supposed to have your ice cleats on and you don't have them on. Um, you know, we've got um, transitions between uh, tile floor and carpeted floor. Um, sometimes you're just, you know, you're not being aware of the difference in the surfaces. Uh, maybe your shoes are worn down. Um, you know, just like you want to have good tread on your tires, you should have good tread on your shoes and you should be wearing good shoes, not Crocs. Okay. If I see Crocs, I'm going to tell you no. Okay. Not only are they incredibly ugly, they have no tread on the bottom. They're incredibly slick. I don't care how comfortable they are. Get you a nice good pair of the Hey Dudes or Skechers shoes and, and get some, some uh, tread on those soles. And if you've got tennis shoes you've been wearing for like the last 10 or 15 years, they get worn down based upon your walking patterns. And that's an uneven surface that you're walking on all the time too. So you need to have good tread on your shoes. Um, you know, think about the kitchen. Uh, somebody could spill, you know, we have the ice machine. And I try and keep a mat down around the ice machine, but sometimes ice gets out there and now you've got little puddles on the floor or somebody drops food on the floor. Um, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of potential for slip, trip, and falls injuries. You have to be aware at all times. So now that we've identified how they happen in areas where they can happen, where you might encounter them, let's talk about protecting yourself. Uh, clean up any spills. Uh, you've all, we've all seen the signs. Your mother doesn't work here. Um, I'm not your maid. Uh, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. Clean up after yourself. Throw your trash away. Wipe up your spills. You know, try not to spill stuff on the floor, especially liquids. And clean up if you do. Um, make sure if you're using any equipment, like a ladder, for some reason you've been given a ladder to use, inspect it. Um, make sure that it is in good condition. Uh, that you shouldn't be using any rickety ladders, you know, loose rungs, uh, the hinges are loose, anything like that. Uh, you know, inspect it, look at it, do a pre-trip inspection of the ladder. The 30 seconds that you take may save you thousands and thousands and thousands in medical bills and pain and suffering. Um, don't carry things that obstruct your vision. Um, you know, especially if you help out in the office, maybe you've been sent to go get a box of paper or something. Uh, use the dolly. Don't be carrying it up here where it blocks your vision and you can't see what's coming at you or what your, your feet might be going to. Don't be jumping down from ladders and equipment. Stay off of those little steps on the side of the bus. Um, always use three points of contact. When you're going up and down the steps, three points of contact. Use the handrail. You should be instructing the children, your student riders, to be using the handrail as well. Uh, if you have a hard time coming up and down the steps, uh, you can go down backwards. But if you're going to go down backwards, down the steps, absolutely be using the handrail. Uh, get a pair of gloves on if you need to and make sure you can use the floor next to you as well. When you're doing your pre-trip inspection and you're leaning out the back door to look at the, the eight ways and your hazard lights, 
hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Uh, make sure you've got three points of contact, two feet solidly on the ground, a hand on the back of the seat, and then as you lean out to look at those lights, um, you shouldn't be falling out the back of the bus. And don't ever step over an object or a hazard. Go around it. Um, I think about a time uh, I broke my arm in 2007 and uh, <laughs> slip, trip, and fall. I fell playing floor hockey. And when I went into the hospital, um, they had put an IV line in, a morphine IV, li IV line, and it was very, very difficult to put it in because it had to go into my, into whatever, left arm. And when they took me to x-ray, um, I was sitting there try they're trying to do the x-rays of my broken arm. And the x-ray tech, instead of walking around me, stepped over my IV line, hit it with their foot, and ripped it out of my arm. Uh, I was more upset about losing my morphine than I was my broken arm. Um, you know, it was it was a hazard. It, it's a hazard. You shouldn't be stepping over things, especially if your feet have to come up to the height of your knees. Okay? Walk around it. Don't be trying to step over be aware of the surfaces when you're stepping out of your bus, and you have to be aware of this for your student as well. Uh, you all remember the morning that we had here where it was so icy and slick. We had the buses that were stuck in the bus loop in Hawaii for 45 minutes. Well, what also we saw is the schools hadn't gotten out and put ice melt down in the areas where the buses unload, and multiple students falling and being injured because of ice. You know, kids don't think about stuff like that. They're just, they're ready to move on with their day, and they just jump off of that bus, and boom, down they go. You need to be aware of what you're stepping down to when you get off of your bus, especially with our uneven parking lot. Now, if you have your area, your parking spot marked, and you're parking in the same place all the time, maybe you've got a mat down there. That's a good way to you know, to know, hey, I'm in the right spot. Uh, you can help avoid some of those potholes and everything. But look, before you step down, look and see what's down at the bottom of those steps before you step on it. Um, there could be snow or ice or, or whatever, especially if there's snow. Snow can be covering up ice underneath it. When you're doing your pre-trip inspection on your bus, not only are we looking for hazards and defects on the bus, you know, we've talked about being aware of what's around your bus for backing. Uh, for walking, all of those types of things. You know, there's there's so much that we have to be aware of. Uh, and it really is to protect you. Uh, not just, you know, making sure that you're following all of the rules or because I'm being a tyrant or something like that, tyrant, whatever. Um, but, but continue to look for hazards. Be aware of those. Um, and, and do it for selfish reasons. Because I don't want to fall and break a hip. I don't want to, I don't want to tear my meniscus or my ACL or my rotator cuff. Uh, very painful things. So, so do this for selfish reasons to protect yourself. Be deliberate in your movements. Um, we get we get in a hurry, especially if you're running late. Uh, and the, sometimes it can be, you know, you're kind of very very fast walking or running out to your bus. Don't do that. Be deliberate in your movements. If you're running late, stay late. Again. Think of those selfish reasons. I'm doing this to protect myself. I don't want to fall. I don't want to injure myself. When things get cold and icy and your path looks kind of dicey, waddle on. Keep your toes all pointy, pointed outy. Keep your knees all loosey-goosey. Waddle on. Keep your hands outside your pockets. Take short steps so you don't rock it. Waddle on. Take it slowly, holy moly, so you don't fall down and rolly. Waddle on. Make sure that you use the PPE that's been provided to you, the ice cleats, the dreaded ice cleats. Now, I know that we issue them out. You are welcome to buy your own. Uh, you can get like the Yak Tracks, whatever from Amazon. But you do sign a policy stating that uh, you will use the ice cleats when the designated signal is out, which is the orange flag, the orange and white checkered flag that will be on all of the gates. Um, use those when that flag is out. Uh, we've had employees that were holding their ice cleats in their hand, fell, uh, and injured their back to the point that they can no longer drive a bus anymore. Um, but the, the thing that they needed that could have prevented that injury, they, they held in their hand. Uh, and they were kind of being a smart aleck about it. Um, didn't want to put them on, 
but help them just because, you know, they signed a policy or whatever. Um, that's, that's the worst kind of injury, you know? Um, if it's dark, use a flashlight. Uh, you have a flashlight out on your bus anyway. Uh, maybe put that in your pocket or carry a backpack. You can get uh, little flashlights from Walmart for a dollar. Uh, very inexpensive. Um, I keep one here in my desk drawer. Looks like this. They're nice and bright. Use that when you're walking out to the bus. Uh, light the pathway in front of you when it's dark. Um, make sure, we talked about your shoes, making sure you have good slip-resistant soles with good traction. No Crocs. Okay, no Crocs. Um, take care of yourself. Okay, I don't want to see anybody here suffer some type of injury that could be permanent or lifelong. Uh, you know, we, we can work together to reduce our slips, trips, and falls. And if you see a hazard, come report it to me, to Rebecca, to Phil, to dispatch, write it up. Uh, when you got hired on, you did sign a paper saying that you have the right to notify management of the safety hazard and that there is no retaliation against you for doing that. I'm not going to retaliate or get mad at you because you come in and report to me that there's maybe a worn rug with a, that was a cut on it that's a trip hazard or, or the sidewalk starting to get lifted. Um, I appreciate those kinds of things. Maybe you're seeing something that, that I'm not. Uh, be sure to report it. If you see something, say something. Thank you for your time and attention today. You will need to get the quiz that is outside of my office door. Uh, you will get credit and get paid for the safety meeting when you turn that quiz in and if you have passed it with at least an 80%. Now, if you went to the in-person meetings, you do not need to take a quiz and turn it in. Maybe you're just bored and you decided to watch my makeup safety video. Uh, hey, you do you, boo. Um, but uh, to get credit for having done the safety meeting for November, uh, any makeup safety meeting, be sure and get that quiz. And if you have any questions, come talk to me.